Welcome to Creative Glamour, I'm Cecilia. Today I'm going to be showing you working on a slightly more mature skin where you have a lot of redness that you have to work with but still having your makeup be very natural. So often I find that when makeup artists has this much redness to work with they apply so much makeup onto that person's face that when they are finished they feel like they don't look like themselves anymore. So today I want to be showing you how to work with that but still smooth and even it out a little bit more. For today's look I'm going to be using some of our liquid foundations, red, the red adjusters and a little bit of the yellow adjusters if need be. So that's just what I've placed on my palette at this point in time. So because we are trying to achieve a much more natural kind of look um, that is the reason for me opting for a liquid foundation rather than a cream foundation so at this point in time I've only applied the one color to the face so if you can see if you compare to what she looked like and what she looks now she's excessively pale because you've taken away all of that coloring that used to be in her face so you just move your head a little this way so if you were matching your foundation you would actually be able to see that when you look at this lighter color here this is the kind of light color that you are using within the face so instead of having to now go and try and take your foundation and put a lot of it on this area we might still be doing a little bit of that at the end but the bare minimum because you want to be bringing some of this coloring back into the face if that makes sense so that's why I'm saying when you start looking at your adjusters, so this one is the red copper adjuster. So you can use some of your natural um, liquid foundation coloring that you were using and you can start bringing that into the face area. Now I'm using a little bit of my darker liquid foundation coloring so when you now compare this side to this side can you see that by adding that amount of extra coloring into your foundation but still sticking to your lighter shade when you start you can start bringing in some of that shading and coloring which then makes the person look a lot more the way they used to look. Obviously on your cheekbone areas where you normally would be applying your blush you would be able to apply maybe a little bit more of this redness I'm applying a little bit of it to the forehead and because she has so much of that red coloring on her face area even yeah where you see it by the hairline you can then lightly go and add a little bit more of that reddishness on those areas and it will make it blend in better with your hairline so when you use the red oxide one it is a little bit more on the pinkier side than the orange side so when you mix that in with your lighter shade you'll find that it is a bit more pinkier so wherever you want to be adding a little bit more of rosiness you can easily be adding that so you'll always see me adding it to my foundation shade it's not adding that color directly onto the skin so once you feel that you've got enough of that coloring coming in then you can look at your chest area that might have excessive redness once you know what your model is going to be wearing you can easily go and add just a little bit of that foundation shade coloring and just tone down that pinkiness just a little bit but this will help that you're not applying massive amounts of foundation onto the chest area so can you see how minimal if by adding that you won't have that excessive redness it's just toned it down but you do still have some of that redness coming through which makes it a lot more natural so imagine for yourself if you had to see yourself with a lot of pinkiness and redness in your face and somebody does your makeup and the first time you see yourself you look this excessively pale you also might not like your makeup so that is where a lot of makeup artists feel 
or I feel that they go wrong is when they only apply all of this to one area, one tone of foundation, maybe do some highlighting and contouring, but not bringing enough of that pigment back into the face. So when you've actually applied some of your powder and you've then still going to do a little bit of blush, then it has kind of like these three different kinds of redness to the face. So you've given the coloring back to the face without it being specifically only in blush without it specifically being only one tone. It has kind of multiple tones of a little bit of pinkiness, but now it's a lot more smoothed out and a lot more constant than a concentrated red area. So what I'll do now is I'll take a little bit of my contour color that is within my concealer palette. Because you still have some of the foundation color on your brush, you're only going to be using a very, very small amount of this coloring and then you can add a little bit of contouring. So this will just give some shadowing to the face, defining a little bit of bone structure. Always remember what you want to hide pretty much is what you're contouring and everything that you want to be bringing forward is what you're highlighting. So let's on this side also do a little bit of just contouring just so that you could see often where you would be going wrong. So even though the contouring will bring some extra color into the face, giving a little bit of definition, not just one skin tone coloring. If you look at this side, can you see how a lot more of that rich coloring that goes within the face gives you an overall nicer application. And it's just by using some of your adjusters, adding some of that pinkiness back. Whenever you feel that you've done too much of the pinkiness, you can always add a little bit of the yellow to just tone it out again where it is a bit much, or you can use a little bit of a foundation sponge or a, another buffing brush, and you can thin it out wherever you need to. The idea is that you wanna try and minimalistic have as little product on the chest area as possible and you want to be putting enough of that coloring within the face area. So once you've done that part, you now don't have a heavy makeup application. So often when you are a more mature model, obviously foundation and powder and all of those things, it does intensify lines and wrinkles. So therefore having a much softer application makes you look a lot more like yourself but still enhancing all your beautiful features. When you've completed your eye makeup and all of that, you'll have still a stunning makeup look, but without it being a full face of changing yourself completely. So see, that is basically your very natural, more mature type of makeup where you have not taken away all the coloring that is within that person's skin tone and you've worked basically with what you've got. You've enhanced all of the features, but made a much softer, much more natural, feminine kind of makeup look. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please go and try this. I know that the adjusters are scary to work with, but they are really a fantastic tool to use. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like our videos and subscribe to our channel.